very slight skewed right maybe we'd call this. Remember, the more normal this is, the more accurate the center is as our estimate of the, of the uh, population value and the more accurate my standard error is. So it's really important that this is normal. But at a sample size of 10, it doesn't look as normal as I might like. Okay? All right, so we're already seeing some principles here. Now, what would happen if I increase the sample size? So I'm going to reset this, and now I'm going to change the sample size. Okay, I'm going to change the sample size to 30. 30 is kind of a famous number in, in, um, in, for sample means. So if I change the sample size to 30, all right, I did that. And let's see what happens. Again, I'm going to generate a sampling distribution, but in take, instead of taking, like I generate one sample or two samples, instead of taking so many of them, um, uh, again, each sample is now going to have 30 numbers in it. So you can see this first sample of 30 had a mean of 154.9, and, and here's the 30 numbers, and then here's the actual sample mean. And this other sa this sample of 30 numbers had a sample mean of 160.833. So you can see again sampling variability, right? The random sample of 30 is not the same as the population. So don't expect your random sample statistics like your sample mean to be the same as your population mean. That's the principle of sampling variability. They're also different from each other. Now if I generate thousands of samples Let's see what happens. Let me see here. I'm going to go see if I can this. I think it's getting a little glitchy on me. I think I might want to restart it here. Let's do that. It doesn't take but a minute. If, you ever, if your computer program ever gets kind of glitchy, turn it off or click out of it and then click back in and see what happens. And there we go. And again, I'm changing this to 30. Okay. And I'm going to generate thousands of random samples. All right. Well, this thing is giving me a little bit of a hassle today. It's, it's standing in front of here. Um, so um, a couple things here. Um, let's see, let's try, let's try this again here. Uh, sample size of 30. Okay, edit data. There we go. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Let's try this again. All right. Good. I got a 30 and that little box is out of my way. All right. So I'm going to generate thousands of samples, right? Thousands of random samples, all now of sample size of 30, right? Now, what, do, what I want you to see is a couple things here. Um, so, let's see, I've taken 6,000 random samples. Always do a bunch. You don't really have to go crazy with it. I mean, after you get to three, 4,000, you know, it, uh, you can still see it pretty well. But always click this 1,000, generate 1,000 samples a few times. Now, samples, uh, notice the sample mean right here. That's the average or the center of the sampling distribution, one, minus 154.952. And that's very close to the population mean, 154.998. So again, we're seeing that principle that the center of the sampling distribution is pretty close to the population value. Okay, so it's very close to the population value. Notice how the standard error, see the standard error when we had a sample size of 10 was about 12. But when I have a sample size of 30, my standard error is dropped to 6.897. So the standard deviation of this sampling distribution is 6.897. See how the standard error has shrunk. Not only is the standard error 
smaller than the population standard deviation or any individual sample standard deviation, but it's also smaller than when I had a sample size of 10. So again, remember that principle, more data, less error, right? So a sample size of 30, more data will have a smaller standard error. Now the more this standard error shrinks, the more normal this graph starts to look. Okay, so, um, so this is now looking very normal. I'm much more happier with the shape of this sampling distribution in terms of the accuracy of the mean and the standard error. Um, later we'll also see in confidence intervals that we like to use um, z-score and t-score curves um, and critical values which are also go with normal. So this has to be normal. There's a really, uh, especially with a lot of the traditional formulas, you really need this to be normal. Okay, so, um, so we see at a sample size of 30, this looks very normal um, and the standard error has shrunk. Now if I go even bigger sample size, it'll just get more normal looking. Okay, so in fact if the population was already normal, the sampling distribution, no matter what sample size I use, will be, le will be more normal than the original population because of that shrinking of the standard error. So if the original population was normal, then even with a sample size of 10, I, this would be normal. But because my population in this circumstance was skewed right, I needed a sample size of 30 or above for it to be, uh, for the sampling distribution to be normal. Okay, so that's a couple things that are really a good takeaway here from this. Now let's look at the sampling distribution for proportions. So I'm going back to stat key, sampling distribution, and here's proportions. Sampling distribution for proportions. Uh, in our last video, we flipped coins, uh, 30 coins at a time. My, I used uh, data from my students. I had them all flip the coin 30 times and, and uh, count how many tails they got. So I'm going to change that sample size to 30. And since we're dealing with a situation where, um, where we have... Uh, where we have uh, um, um, so let's go right here to edit proportion and I'm going to put in uh, 0.5 since uh, flipping coins and getting tails has a 50% uh, okay so there's my 50% so this is this is a situation where you're flipping coins to get tails um, last time we, I showed you a sampling distribution where we had about 60 samples. So maybe I'll click this generate 10 samples six times. And that's kind of the graph that we had on the board last time, right? It kind of looks like that, though this one's a little more spread out. And you can see each individual sample. So just because the population is 50% doesn't mean your sample is going to come out at 50%. When you flip coins, you're not necessarily always going to get exactly 50% tails. Back in this sample right here, we had 20 out of 30. So I'm seeing, again, sampling variability. <coughs> okay, now... Let's take a look now. This is not enough samples. I want more samples here. So I'm going to reset this here and I'm going to click the generate thousand samples a few times. All right, generate a thousand samples a few times. And again, what we're seeing, let's see what it looks like. There we go. Doesn't take very long. This is pretty impressive. I mean, 3,000 random samples, all of 30. Um, so you're talking uh, 90,000 flips of the coin it did in a split second. This is a real game changer in modern statistics that we can calculate millions of values in a, in a split second. It's also the reason why we know more about statistics today than we ever had in the past. So you can see that it's very normal, right? We kind of saw that yesterday, that it looks very normal. We also see that the average of my sampling distribution here is 0.5. Uh, I think when we estimated uh, the standard error yes last time, 
uh, we had a standard error of about 0.1 and this one's actually 0.091 uh, which is actually pretty close so our, our estimation wasn't too far off so here's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution 0.091 and here's the mean average of all the sample proportions so we have 3,000 sample proportions and when I take the mean average of all those sample proportions I get 0.5 which is close to the population value so again the center of the sampling distribution close to the population value now um, a couple things I should mention remember the principle of sampling variability when you make a sampling distribution your numbers are not going to be the same as mine right here um, your, my random samples are not the same as your random samples every random sample is different and um, my, you're going to probably be close, but I'll bet when, if you did this same exact thing that I just did a second ago, you might get 0.092 as your standard error, or 0.090 as your standard error. You might get a mean of 0.501, or 0.499, or 0.498. Again, there will be some slight variations in these numbers because of sampling variability. So every time you do a sampling distribution, don't think that your answer has to be exactly what is on an answer key. It will be, there will be sampling variability. That's why you'll see in, in the answer keys it'll say um, the answers will vary slightly. You should be close, but it, there will be some slight variations in the answers for the mean and the standard error. Okay, let's look at another uh, proportion one. So, let's see, here's our proportion. Now this was an interesting data set. It had a population proportion of 0.275, and this was the graduation rate at a college. So we're assuming that the population graduation rate of all students that have ever gone to that college is 0.275. Okay, so it's important to re realize that there, this is now our population value. So the question is, if I take a random sample, am I going to get 0.275? Okay, now I'm going to change the sample size. Let's do a sample size of just 10. I want to see what happens with small sample sizes. All right, so, um, okay. So I got a sample size of 10 and